Is, is hitting U.S. businesses with $4 trillion in tax hikes helpful to lowering the cost of goods for consumers, yes or no? As I look at the Biden administration's FY23 budget proposal, the budget proposal includes $4 trillion in tax hikes on U.S. companies, including targeted tax hikes on U.S. energy, as I look at the budget. Um, my question, Secretary Yellen, is, uh, is, is hitting U.S. businesses with $4 trillion in tax hikes helpful to lowering the cost of goods for consumers, yes or no? To the extent that inflation is a matter of demand and supply, some deficit reduction certainly seems like it's appropriate to complement the steps that the Federal Reserve is taking to bring down inflation. But look, gas prices are an enormous problem. You're absolutely right about that. It's an enormous burden on American households. We need to do everything we can to address that. And the President is doing that. It is a global market. Gas prices track global oil prices. Well, this is uh, a problem all over the world. I when we look at, again, the work shortage out there, again, can't find enough truck drivers, can't find enough nurses, not enough uh, engineers, mechanics. So again, I look at your budget and, and trying to figure out how $4 trillion in new taxes is good for the labor market. And then secondly, you know, um, fuel affects everything, manufacturing, production of food, transportation. I don't think taxes is the path to do that. Well, I know my time has expired. Uh, Mr. Yes. Chairman, if I could just submit for the record a document from um, Republican Committee on House Ways and Means titled Mythbuster, No, the Child Tax Credit Doesn't Reduce Poverty by Half and It Discourages Work. Thank so you. ordered. Inflation and increased taxes, which are being proposed and which we're dealing with, really hurt our supply chain. And they send our supply chain right to countries like China. And that's the last thing we need, because it's dangerous. When our supply chain is at risk, it's dangerous for our nation's economic security, our nation's national security, and our nation's health security. So how are we going to... Uh, accomplish turning around and solving our supply chain problem while making the United States less competitive, less competitive than the very adversaries that we're trying to compete against. We're very focused on supply chains and agree that they need to be made more resilient. And um, I would strongly disagree with your assessment, both of the Tax Cut and Jobs Act. It resulted in very substantial losses in corporate tax revenue, and the uh, proposals... Yeah, more people were paying taxes than ever before because they were working, so I would strongly we disagree recognize. with you, and, and I yield back. They're working now, too. Thank the gentleman. After 18 months of this administration, I believe that this administration has sown the wind of reckless economic policies, and the American people have reaped the whirlwind of economic pain. The spending spree that lit a fire on inflation that has consumed every American, every worker, consumed their wages, consumed their purchasing power, consumed their livelihoods, irresponsible unemployment policies, welfare without work requirements, reasonable stuff that wouldn't trap and sideline labor so small businesses who were trying to get up on their feet after COVID could survive. But they couldn't hire anybody, Madam Secretary. Supply chain turmoil, tractors couldn't get, I mean, farmers couldn't get tractor parts, the fuel costs, the fertilizer just completely running away from them. Repeated warnings from Democrat economists like Larry Summers and Jason Furman, the San Francisco Fed, even the nonpartisan CBO said, don't do it, don't do it. And the Democrat, my colleagues and your administration, supported a partisan spending spree, this spending bill, not a single Republican supported it, that has been disastrous. And it, it has put us in a tailspin, and um, I pray we recover from it. Uh, I want to show you, though, I have a chart that sh shows the deficits on an annual basis. 
And you can see this is 2019. We have essentially two and a half years that were affected by COVID, which we, we all allow for that. We know that the, expend, the spending was higher than, it was all deficit spending, by the way. But the year after COVID, the first year of the budget that we're here discussing today, is higher than the deficit was uh, before COVID hit. And then it goes up on an upward trajectory every single year, uh, with one slight exception there, uh, during this budget. How can you claim that you're reducing deficits, or how can the Biden administration claim that deficits are being reduced in this 10-year budget? Well, it's, it's a reduction relative to what we inherited. Uh, so, so there's not a real reduction in the deficit? Well, obviously the baseline does have deficits rising, but proposals that we have made would. So we're, not, so we're not accomplishing the goal of reducing the deficit in any way in this budget? We have not proposed policies that would lead to greater deficits. And in the next 10-year uh, but, period... But, but we're leading to greater deficits in every year. Yeah. So, that, so that's, I, I call that swamp math. You go outside of the Beltway one step, and there was no one in America who will believe that the Biden administration is reducing deficits. It's harmful to the future of the country, and I don't understand how you can be claiming that deficits are being reduced when it obviously is not the case. 